Good morning, welcome to Chasing Chunks TV. I'm Johnny Tosh and welcome to my second video blog of the year. You join me currently en route to Earlsview Fishery for the 48 hour session on the 1st of April. Now book this lake um, and swim on the 2nd of January with the anticipation of coming out today to doing a little bit of spring fishing. However, spring is very much put into the wider content of this trip because the last week we've had high double figure temperatures. The past two days we've had a Siberian wind coming, we've had low temperatures in the day and we've got minus conditions due for the next 48 hours during the night. So I'm expecting the fish and the fishing to be a little bit tricky. Them fish are definitely going to be uh, a little bit tricky to catch, especially with being stunned by the variable weather conditions. So that's why I'm doing this intro in the car before I get there, because time is going to be precious, and I want to get them rods in as soon as possible. And I don't really want to be talking to the camera when I want to get these rods in situ. Now I'm currently going to be fishing swim one for the 24 hours until the morning. Then I'm going to be moving up because somebody is booked in swim one and I'm going to be moving into swim two. There is another swim available, swim five, which I wasn't really too keen about getting in because I want to be in them sort of areas, swim one and swim two, because that big girl is due to come out and as uh, should be around the 40 pound mark. Uh, the lake itself is again like a purpose built carp lake. It's uh, got I think five swims on it as I said and there's some really really nice fish to catch in there. But we'll see how we get on over the next 48 hours. I'm really looking forward to coming down here you know and having a go. I've never fished it before going in blind. Um, well I say I'm going in blind I've actually asked on the Chasing Chunks Facebook group. If you're not a part of that Facebook group, all the links will be in the description below. I asked the other day uh, about the lake and again there's always anglers, always good anglers on there that will give you sound advice and uh, yet yeah, once again it come true and another guy messaged me from named Luke who's done a lot of time in there and he's also given me some valuable information. So yeah, really looking forward to just being out on the bank, even if I don't catch the video blog will go out. And uh, yeah, just, just looking just to chill out, relax and do some uh, chasing. So I'll see you bankside when I get to Earl's View, I'm probably about 25 minutes away. So uh, enjoy the video blog, again I'm going to bring the cameras around with me, if we're blank or not, it's going to be going out to you guys, for you to enjoy me freezing my nuts off on the bank or enjoying a great big chunk to photo. So, see you in a bit guys, and uh, enjoy the video vlog.
So the start of any session, I've got to find marks and see what I'm fishing over. I've got a couple of ideas where I want to be, just out of experience and just talking to other guys that have fished this. And one is just off that island. The other one, I'll probably put down to the left hand side. Apparently there may be a little bit of a weed bed out there which I've got to find. But I'm only in this swim for 24 hours so I don't really want to be whipping this lead out and making too much disturbance. So I'm basically just going to have a little cast around, two or three casts in each area and just find a mark. So this one's going over towards the island. So I'm probably about a rod length off that. So let's come back a bit. Click up to there. I'll have a little bit of drag back. Hopefully you can hear me okay. Wind is pumping in. That is exactly where I want to be. Quick draw back, perfect. That's the one rod done. So I'm just going to see how many wraps that is now. I'm quite happy with where it went. And I'll just mark that. There you go, little yellow after in there, couple of uh, couple of maize in there as well, just to uh, give it a little bit of traction, something to home in, and that is going to go out right now. Not a lot, just enough, just to mask my smell a little bit. Let's see if I can get this out. Boom. That is on the money. 14 and a half wraps. Couldn't have gone out any better. So I've just made my way around from the swim over there where I've just put the first rod out and I'm just going to place another rod down in this bay just in the margin just off that weeping willow tree. As you can see there I've just got a bare lead I'm just going to just drop it into the margin just have a little bounce around see what the bottom's like and if I uh, like what I'm feeling then I'm just going to put the solid bag out to, and in that solid bag is a little yellow wafter, a couple of micro pellets and a couple of maize as well. So let's make my way around here. I'm going to keep quiet because obviously if anything's around there, I'm holding these margin. I don't want to make too much noise. Now this weeping willow is the boundary of my swim. So I'm right on it. rock solid that is got no problem at all placing the rig there I've got 
got a pretty heavy lead in there so it'll just take up the slack without moving the lead Sweep. Join me at seven o'clock on the evening. We've gone through today and we've just got that last bit of sunshine shining. Not seen any feedback today as in regards to carp. Been really quiet. But we've got three rods out. I'm really confident on where my spots are. I'm really confident with the rigs and the bags that I've set up that if them carp do get on the feed and they're in the area, then I'm gonna pick one up going by what the other guys have said with that all the fish have been caught early morning I wasn't really expecting you know anything to happen today so I'm gonna get in the bag I'm gonna get my thermal cover on because it's gonna be minus two conditions tonight so we're gonna have a hard frost and hopefully get up in the morning to a one towner and get them Delkin was singing, or should I say, warbling. So, really lovely. That's the view from the swim. Really love it down here. Where else would you rather be on a Friday night? Yes, I could be out on the town. I could be uh, dancing on the dance floor. But that is my dance floor. And hopefully a big chunk will turn up so I'll leave you with that view and I'll see you either in the night or first thing in the morning bright and early good afternoon guys
Well, good morning, as you join me at first light this morning, and as I'm listening to the first bird songs of the morning, unfortunately, last night was uneventful. I've got to be honest, it was really, really cold last night. It went down to minus conditions, and it was pretty unpleasant, even underneath my thermal cover, I was still cold. So what I'm going to be doing basically is stopping in here this morning, sporadically putting the heater on and keeping wa as warm as I can. Now I have got to have a pack down to be moved into swim two around about nine, ten o'clock. So hopefully we've got plenty of time to get them Delkim singing off and get our first carp of this V block. Listened out for carp last night, probably heard about two showers which in all fairness sounded out in front of this swim. So I'm going to uh, keep my eyes peeled, get my letterbox down, just keep uh, looking out over the water. Hopefully we'll see our first proper carp, because I haven't seen one since I set foot through that gate 24 hours ago. But, yeah, still feeling very, very confident for a bite. So, I'm going to have plenty of cups of tea this morning, keep myself warm and hopefully bring the cameras with me and enjoy the morning tea. Well, nine o'clock, the rods are still in situ. I'm down to the last hour when I've got to get off at 10 o'clock and move round to swim two. The batter's all ready to go. We're all ready to rock. And then rods will stop in as long as it takes or as, or as long as it takes for them anglers to get round before I reel in. We're still in bite time. I'll be mad to move them rods at the moment. And uh, though I haven't had anything last night, nobody else has had anything around the lake. So it isn't that I'm doing something wrong, it's just that them fish are not switching on at the moment. Could be to do with the temperatures and the varied temperatures. I would think it is, to be honest with you. But like I say, we've had high double figure temperatures a couple of days ago, and it's literally plummeted to uh, minus conditions on the night. So it's always gonna be a little bit difficult, but uh, yeah, you know, carp fishing, things get, you know, flipped and uh, just the, them, all them hours of silence for a couple of minutes of madness and just one take could make a session and could make your trip out. So I'm gonna stick at it and uh, I'll see you in the next hour over in swim two. So basically this is what's on all three rods at the moment. ESP mini solid bag, salmon fried crumb, micro pellets, white wafter, and I'm just about to inject some triple S liquid 
around the hook bait to give it a little bit of attraction. As I said yesterday, the lake is murky. So we want to make sure we can draw them down. So that's why I'm using glugs and obviously the triple S liquid, which is a very, very potent uh, glug. Now I would like to give you all the spiel that, you know, it's going to be the hook bait that catches you the fish. It's going to be the micro pellets because they're the best micro pellets in the world. But in all honesty, you know, we're just trying to nick a bite. I'm not going to uh, give you any bullshit, guys. This is just so, so, so simple. You don't want to be overcomplicating your fishing because if you're overcomplicating your fishing, right, you get more things wrong. And it makes it even more difficult to put your rods out effectively so yeah it's just basically really really simple tactics and as you can see just inject a little bit of that and that is going to go out on the island for the next 24 hours beauty of solid bags is i know it's going to be presented i know it ain't going to tangle up as it's going through the water column and when that goes down to the bottom, it's going to give off a nice bit of attraction with that nice wafter just hovering above it. Let's get it out. So I've just put out my solid bag back on the spot after that fish rudely interrupted me dragging line or a lead and to try and combat this fish picking up my line I've put a back lead on and I'm going to see how that goes if it still continues then the only other way I can try and get away with it He's just slacking completely off and hope that it doesn't drag the line anymore. It all depends on how big that hook link is that the fish has got in its mouth or how much line it's trailing. It's depending on whether it's going to pick up my lines. Now it's not just me, the guys on, on swim one. I've had that issue as well and he had a little bit of an indication on his alarm he picked up into me he was fishing towards the island and halfway between him, himself and the island there was a big swirl on top as he picked up into itself it's definitely definitely a fish trailing line or a lead So, 
kick back, see whether it happens anymore, and enjoy the rest of this afternoon. Again, because I've had that line on the right hand rod picked up, I am going to uh, really put that solid bag out later, just as a precaution, just in case it did drag the lead and it dragged it into any debris especially when you're using hand sharpened hooks as well any little bit of movement can blunt the hook so i don't want that i'd rather just bring it in i was planning on leaving them out but obviously this fish has uh, messed that idea up a little bit right i'll leave you with a view for a bit and I'll catch you a little bit later. you join me at seven o'clock and as the sun just burns away the last bit of light and disappears behind the trees on the opposite bank we are going into what is forecast to be a very very cold night at minus three conditions with that i am definitely going to retreat into the bivvy get in the bag and get that thermal cover over me and zip up for the night ahead so not a lot's going to happen this evening again uh, everything has been coming early morning and nobody else has caught anything on the lake not seen anything at all so you know i don't predict or expect to update the video blog tonight but we'll definitely join you in the morning and uh, we'll enjoy the morning together and uh, hopefully just hopefully in the next few hours and going into the morning I can show you the chunk for the video blog and save myself a blank. So good night guys and I will see you very shortly. Bye bye. pleasant because the wind's blowing directly into my swim so I am looking a little bit like the Antarctic adventurer uh, wrapped up in all these thick clothing uh, and as expected last night I caught bugger all it's looking very much like a blanks on the cards this morning but you know, while them rods are out there, there's still that chance, and I'm still hoping and praying that we get one. Probably got about three hours before I start to pack up and get back off home. So plenty of time yet, but I'm going to start to have a little bit of a slow pack down, and start to load the barra, and start to um, start to look to, you know, get back off home 
and uh, get on with the editing of this video because it's going out whether I'm blank or not and um, yeah I've enjoyed my time down here without a shadow of a doubt I'm definitely back because I certainly don't let things beat me like that and uh, I'll definitely if I don't catch today I'll definitely be back for my revenge but I'm going to enjoy the morning keep warm off me uh, stove and um, yeah hopefully I'll update the video blog a bit later and just log off and uh, finish off this trip out I said really enjoyed it lovely lovely place to be and just like the boathouse fishery last week if you've not seen that video then uh, I'll put a I'll put a little thumbnail to that video that I done last week you know these these fisheries that you know purposely built for carp anglers they're always absolutely superb and um, they've got everything that you need and uh, they're usually set in very very tranquil and peace peaceful areas so I'm gonna stop waffling on and uh, I'm gonna get back to uh, packing down and just enjoying the rest of the morning. So, catch you later. Keep on, brew time. Bye bye. Well, unfortunately, we're down to the last half an hour before I go bring these rods in and get back off home. I hope you've liked this video. I know it's been a big fat blank, but this is not a scripted um, video this is how you'll find it when you come down to this uh, water and this day to get water and a blank is always gonna happen so there's no captures from another day fancy editing and making it look like I'm better than what I am I am just like you guys I don't try to be any better than anybody else I've been doing carp fishing for 40 years and in that 40 years I have blanked with everybody else because again that is carp fishing. The only thing that you learn to pick up is just to change things up, move things around just to get yourself a bite. Uh, but at the end of the day when you're dealing with carp then they'll do the hell of what they want to do and if they don't want to feed or if they don't want to be in a particular area or round by where your rigs are you've either got to move on to them or they ain't going to be bothered at all with feeding so again hopefully you like these videos subscribe and uh, do all that sort of thing follow my channel like this post and also uh, hopefully I'll see you on the next Chasing Chunks TV video with me and uh, hopefully next time I'll catch so for me it's a bish bash bosh keep tosh wet nets tight lines See you on the next video. Bye-bye.